Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage. And today we're doing something we haven't done in a little bit and we're talking tools, specifically plasma cutters. Now, if you're not sure why you wanna know about plasma cutters, they are perfect for a home shop, whether you're working on your own car, you have a small, medium-sized production, automotive repair shop, or even a fabrication shop. It is a staple that once they've become as affordable as they are today, really they belong just about everywhere. They can do a lot. Now, if you're not familiar with what a plasma torch is, it's like backwards welding. Instead of using that electrical arc and introducing wire like you would in MIG welding to fuse metal together, you're using a compressed gas along with that electrical current to generate ionized plasma to blow holes through metal. So instead of joining them together, we're blasting them apart. So as you can imagine, that is a very useful thing for lots of applications. Whether you're cutting out brackets and fabricating something to build a car, if you're doing sheet metal work and you need to just demo a ton of metal off really quickly and you know there's nothing directly behind what you're cutting, rip right along with the plasma torch. If you're dealing with a very rusty car and you don't have a big old cart with oxyacetylene, you can get that done with plasma as well. You've seen plasma torches used quite a bit here on the channel going all the way back to the International Harvester Johnny Rev build when we were at Randy GRC's shop when we were tearing them down we were doing cuts and modifications to the frame rails. We then used the CNC plasma table to cut the new parts that we were building it back with. It is a very versatile machine. So like I said kind of jokingly it is opposite welding in how it works. You have a ground clamp that you need to clamp to the surface. You need to have a good conductive path through it. So if it's an extraordinarily rusty metal, you might need to hit it and buzz it down a little bit so you can have nice shiny metal for both the grounding clamp and the cutting torch. It then sends a compressed gas around the outside of your cutting nozzle. Then through the center of the cutting torch, it steps up that voltage, blasts all of it down, sends the current through and creates plasma. Now there's technically, you know, that extra state of matter. This isn't quite that plasma, but it's kind of that plasma, but not really. At any rate, it's creating an intense heat of nearly 16,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It, it is a very concentrated jet stream that allows you to cut with an exact precision wherever you're pointing that down. Very similar to like a water jet cutting table or something along those lines, where you're able to have a very focused point. Now, with a plasma torch, if you hold it still too long, the heat will radiate out a little bit, but eventually you run out of metal, you run out of the uh, current path to go back around, and the machines will turn themselves off. Now, machines today have gotten a lot smarter. In the past, if you held that trigger down, it's going to be blasting nonstop, whereas most modern machines will detect that there's not a successful current path and shut off, both protecting the machine and protecting you. Now, I'm not gonna tell you a plasma torch is less messy than a cutting wheel or grinding wheel. You still do get the byproduct of metal dust coming off, but you're also not getting abrasive dust blowing everywhere. So it's a little less messy. And when it comes to consumables, you're not gonna burn through your tips as long as you're using them correctly quite as frequently as you're gonna go through a cutting wheel or saw blade. So it has that slight economic benefit of you don't go through your consumables as quickly using them. Also, full disclosure, in front of me are two different titanium machines from Harbor Freight that they gave me. I'm not telling you you should go buy the titaniums. I've had fantastic luck. I've abused both of these a whole lot, and they're holding up great. What I will tell you is, generally speaking, you will want to spend at least $500 on your plasma cutter. There are 20 amp options that are about $300, and if you're doing nothing but super super thin sheet metal, you could probably get by with that. Now, for being perfectly honest, this is one of those situations where sometimes you should buy a little bit more machine because if all you've done is sheet metal work, eventually you're gonna become a better fabricator and go, hey, I wanna build a bumper. And then you're gonna find out your little 20 amp machine can't quite cut the plate steel that you need to make the bumper. And I've found for the most part, Eastwood, Titan, Hobart, all of the big names, they are very genuine with the thickness of material they tell you that you're able to cut with these machines, 3 eighths, half inch. 
it all varies on your power fed into the machine, your air, and the speed that you move the torch. So if they tell you it's a 3 8 capable machine, you can very reliably trust that it will cut a 3 8 plate steel. And when I say, you know, buy up a little bit more machine than you think you'll ever need, to put that into perspective, I believe this one is currently just under $900, it is also dual voltage, meaning you can plug it into 240 or 110, 120, whatever. I'm sorry, home wiring guys, I'm a 12 volt guy. It, it can run dual voltage, but this machine on 240 volts with good clean air pressure coming through it is rated for a 5 8 inch clean cut, meaning a nice smooth cut and a one inch just basically demo cut. That being said, 98% of you will never be doing more than, you know, one inch plate. I, I don't think I'm ever gonna cut more than one inch plate. So look ahead, scale up a little bit and get the right machine. And you will need a decent air compressor behind it, depending on amperage, material thickness that you're cutting, all of that factors into how big of an air compressor you're gonna need. But realistically, if you're in your home shop, you're fabricating enough that you're looking at a plasma torch you're gonna have a good air compressor. Now, where these machines come in incredibly handy is when you're needing to make a bracket. Let's say you're wanting to do an engine swap. Let's say, uh, you know, 454 big block into a Nissan 300ZX and you need to build some motor mount plates. It's incredibly handy to be able to take your plate steel, set it down, run a straight edge, and with the guide, just rip that torch. It is substantially faster than just about any saw you're gonna pull out and generally makes less mess. You're also able to go ahead and pierce holes, get them kind of ready and then finish them up with a drill bit and you can do a tremendous amount just with hand cutting. That's why all of you really should start looking at getting yourself a plasma torch. I, they're a lot of fun and they're very useful. But then comes the time where you realize, hey, I'm using this a whole lot or you need to do 10 of something. Let's say you got a drift car and you wanna do a bunch of uh, bash bars for it, or you found you like a real specific design for something to hold wires or just any other small bracket in your car and you wanna do something and get a lot of them done. That introduces our friend, the CNC plasma table. Now, again, you've seen that at Randy's a whole lot. Generally, you get them in four foot by three foot, four foot by four foot, four foot by eight foot. You can get massive tables that are flat. They cut plate steel. You can also get certain ones that are designed specifically for cutting tube if you do a lot of roll cages, and that will hold your plasma torch, and then using servos and motors, and it moves and cuts exact precision, so you're able to replicate and get perfect parts repeatedly. But those have two downsides, size and generally cost. Now, they've come down a little bit. They're still not cheap in the world of a home garage just yet. And that's where uh, our friend, the Arc Droid, comes in. This was sent out to me a little while ago, and it's just been sitting in the corner. I bought a pre-made table, built a stand, welded it in, and had it all ready to go, and I just kept looking at it. And that's because, quite honestly, in my mind, it made no sense. If you at home, me and the shop, are to the point that we want to start CNC cutting stuff, don't we just buy, you know, a table? So we're gonna kind of segment a little bit into talking specifically about this ARC droid. And is this the droid you're looking for? These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Move along. Move along. Yes, it, it's an obvious spoon-fed terrible pun. I have to use it, guys, come on. But full disclosure, I entered into this with the expectation of concluding the video telling you this thing makes no sense, just get something bigger. And uh, well, no, I, I really like it. So let's talk a little bit about a full-size table, some of the benefits of this little table. We actually use this a whole bunch because like I talked about, you needed to build some brackets. I needed to build some stuff to get ready to do some of the main chassis work on our Drift BMW. So first and foremost, let's kind of look at costs of a CNC table. We're not going to include the cost of a plasma torch because pretty much no matter if you're buying a pre-made CNC table or you're buying the Arc Droid, you need to provide your own plasma torch. Some companies have them as add-in options, but you need, you need to have this equipment. So that's not part of the equation. 
Now, looking around, kind of one of the best, you know, decently reviewed CNC tables. It was four foot, not quite four foot by three foot uh, by Crossfire. Really nice unit. It came to about $1,800. And then you would need to go ahead and provide your own laptop or computer to run it. So depending on what you got there, that's, that's a huge scale. It could be anything, but that's your base price. And once you buy it, that shop space is forever committed to that plasma table. It doesn't move very easily. You can't fold it up against the wall. It doesn't go away. Where this was meant to kind of fill the void, you can have a temporary table set up. You can have something that completely disappears. You pull it out. This can sit on your shelf and it's lightweight enough to move. You pull it out. You do a quick home and re-zero, make sure it's level and within minutes you're cutting with it. So a shop with very small space, it works incredibly well for that. So that kind of gains a little bit and it has its own computer or handheld directly built into it. Now let's go into one of the biggest features that the ArcDroid offers that other machines don't necessarily have. This has what's called a trace feature. What that means is you can take your CAD cardboard aided design and transform it into CAD computer drawings. Uh, you do that with this stylus when it's sitting on its table and homed right now, I've kind of got it prop. This arm will move. So you're able to set up and trace an object and then that automatically puts points into your handheld and you're able to then immediately start cutting or adjusting it. Now again, other machines are able to take photos on grids and transfer it, but I'm personally not aware of another immediately traceable object. So if you need a wrench, a really thin wrench, you're able to trace one of your current ones really quickly and within three minutes have a small flat little spanner. That's something really convenient. Again, this is something you can sit down, draw on software, convert to DFX files, and use on a traditional machine. This just, I think it was three minutes of between tracing and cutting. I started off needing you know, a little horseshoe mount for my E46 so we can kind of set up, build a jig and replace a completely destroyed strut tower on the drift car. So I grabbed some cardboard, a little bit thick, cut out the shape I wanted, ran it around with the stencil and then started cutting. Now, this was right off my trace into an immediate cut. I don't know why the software for some reason wasn't dropping the torch all the way down but it's very jagged and not very clean. That's where problem one comes up. The trace is only as good as what you're tracing and how well you trace it. It's very straightforward. You can learn it a whole lot better, but I found very quickly this particular cardboard template wasn't very good. So what I did is I had a strut brace that was built for the damaged towers, but it had, you know, a nice metal piece that I could then trace. So I traced it, it had, you know, some awkward shapes. And then I immediately started trying to have that cut. And again, for some reason on one of the cuts, it just didn't drop and cut that other hole. Don't know why, I can learn it. But then I was able to get two fairly usable pieces, but the holes weren't very perfect. And uh, I wasn't thrilled with that. So. This is where one big benefit will come in. Once you have traced something, you can then save it to a jump drive as G code, take it to your computer and then dress the drawing up a little bit, correct a couple things. And uh, that's where I've ended up with these. Now in part of my drawing, this was a mistake on my part. I had a random pierce and one other spot there. That's just mistakes I made, but these are usable. I was able to figure out the program enough and the software enough that it was about 10 minutes from tracing to having these cut. So very user-friendly. All right, now you need to go and justify to your partner, your husband, your wife, why you should spend $2,500 or if you wanna get a, a full-size table. I'm not telling you to buy an ArcDroid. I'm saying you should get a plasma torch and maybe really look at getting a CNC in your life. This is $2,500. So let's say I'm using it with my little 45. Works great. So 
why you need to go spend $3,300 right now. That's because it's a money-making opportunity. It's not just for cars. Something that I really liked about the ArcDroid, now again, other software is going to be able to do this, but it's incredibly simple with the ArcDroid. You can download clip arts. You can download any really file out there. There's tons of it. You download it, you load it, you cut it, and you're gonna jump on Facebook Marketplace and you're gonna sell fun little trinkety things. I downloaded a free clip art, loaded it in the machine, and now I can uh, paint this up a little bit. We could sell these. $25 maybe? Someone would wanna hang that on the wall, you put a nice little piece of stainless steel in the background, you've got that. You can do number plates, you can do in memory of. There's lots of fun things that you can put together with the software, you know? Again, I just load it up real quick and cut, cut the shop logo. Literally, just what I send out for stickers needs a little bit of adjustment, but I downloaded the file, loaded the file, and hit cut, so now we know what we can trim up. So it's one of those things where there's lots of ways you can use this equipment to make money, and it doesn't take up a lot of space, you can cut out, you know, mailbox numbers, house numbers. You can make, you know, really cool trophies. This is something Randy did where it was cut out on the plasma table. They cut the holes, they backed it with some stainless steel, did a little bit of heat burnishing with a torch, and then shot it with clear coat. So it's one of these tools that gets often overlooked and is hard to justify because it isn't a cheap investment, but it's one that if you're smart with, will make you money and just makes a lot of sense. It makes your life a lot easier when you're building your cars and it gives you a chance to be a little bit extra creative and potentially make some money, you know? Ma ma making dog hearts. Isn't, isn't it adorable? I'll actually take this one home now because the wife thought it was really cool when I just sent her a picture of it. So it's a whole lot of fun. It's an incredibly useful tool. So yeah, if you've been trying to justify getting some of this equipment in your shop, it does make your life a whole lot better Hopefully you learned a little bit about how it works and how you can make some money with it. Again, I'm not telling you to buy any one particular Plasma Torch brand. I'm not gonna say I've used them all. Use that general guideline, $500 or more. You're probably gonna get something good. Make sure you can get consumables easily for it because you will burn through tips, especially when you're first learning it and you're accidentally shoving the torch all the way in. You actually need a little bit of air gap. So just make sure you can get parts for it pretty easily. Let that guide your decision. You absolutely should have one in the garage. And then when you're ready, you know, you, you want a CNC plasma table. You can do all kinds of really cool things with it or totally opposite of my expectation. I expected to hate this little guy, but it really might be the droid you're looking for. It gives you a whole lot of power at a pretty affordable price for what you're trying to get done with it. So a little bit shorter, different, quicker type of tool review, talking about one particular type of equipment that you need in your shop. I hope you appreciate it. If you need a little bit more tool advice, we've talked about different types of hand tools in the past, and uh, and I've done the, the tool truck uh, constant debt crawl. I, I get it. Harbor Freight five years ago is not the Harbor Freight you have today. Um, at any rate, Got some other tool videos up there if you want a little bit more buying advice from a guy who's slowly becoming an old man and yelling, get off my lawn. If you enjoy this type of video, tell me what you would like me to maybe talk about. Some of you were asking for plasma cutters, so we did plasma cutters and we finally talked about the Arc Droid. Do we do electric hand tools, power tools next? If I've got experience, I'm happy to talk about pretty much anything that I can to help you guys spend your money wise help you have fun in the shop and be safe doing it. Let me know what you'd like an oldish guy to tell you about what I've uh, got experience with and can hopefully impart a little bit of wisdom to help you guys along your way. Or if I am totally off base talking about plasma torches, if I'm an idiot and you think you need to correct me, comment below. Helps me out just the same because I can still learn and uh, YouTube likes it when you guys comment. So make sure you're commenting below. Like the video if you liked it. I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices, except for when it comes to tools. Spend a little bit of time, spend your money wisely. We'll see you.